Hi everyone, myself uh, Professor Satish Huli from VSI MIT Engineering College, Nippani. <coughs> Today I have selected topic uh, on the subject WST. In that I have selected the uh, sampling part. Um, as per the video syllabus, it is in Model 2 Part B Sampling. So now what exactly the meaning of sampling? What is in sampling itself? So sampling is nothing but collection of sample from a water body or from a waste water body. Uh, it should be collected in such a way that it should resemble the original characteristic of that particular water body from where you have collected it. Okay. So sampling plays a very much important role when you tend to design a sewage treatment plant when you analyze in sewage treatment plant, when you design an effluent treatment plant, and to analyze an effluent treatment plant, to find out a source for any community because should the source should be very much good. Okay, to analyze a source itself, source here is nothing but it's a water body itself. You know, to analyze the performance of any water treatment plant again. Okay, how the water treatment plant is working and all. So to understand all those things, sampling plays a very much important role. Even in designing aspect also, sampling plays a very much important role. Based on the characteristic of that sample itself, we are going to design uh, in a sewage treatment plant, it may be, it may be in water treatment plant, it may be, it may be an effluent treatment plant. So how many number of units should be added, what type of units should be added. This all depends upon the characteristic. Okay, so sampling plays a very much important role. Now, again, the, what is the importance, uh, means uh, what is the reason behind the sampling program itself. So I listed a uh, few important points over here. The first one is a routine operation data on overall plant performance. This is nothing but what we are going to do here is we are going to check the performance of an uh, treatment units. It may be in water treatment plant, it may be in effluent treatment plant, it may be in uh, sewage treatment plant. So what we are going to do? We are going to collect a sample from various treatment units from inlet and outlet. You are going to analyze the characteristics and based on that characteristic results you are going to say how the well the treatment plant are working. Okay. So we can understand all that. What's the rate of efficiency and all regarding the removal of pollutants. Documentation process and all for that also the sampling is very much important. Reporting and uh, regulatory complaints. It is nothing but it, it all relate to what is key uh, for your pollution control board. Okay. EPA, Central Pollution Control Board. Whether the discharge which is being done to any water body, it is as per the standards or not. Whether we, whether the industry or the municipal corporation are meeting the standard that is required to be maintained in an effluent stand. So how we are going to understand by collecting a water sample and, and analyzing it based on the what type of contamination levels are present. We are going to say whether they are being, uh, they are, uh, they are following uh, the guidelines or not. We can understand all those things. Next one, uh, implementation purpose of uh, new program. New program here is nothing but what we are going to do is if you want to set up a water treatment plant, where you need to under, where you need to put up a water treatment plant, what type of unit you need to put it over there, okay? So all those design aspects, so we can we can we can uh, what we can do is here is um, based on that those, those characteristic only we are going to select what type of unit should be fitted in that. For example, you require a grease uh, unit like in uh, oil and grease removal tank or not. If you want to carry out a segmentation process, what type of segmentation process you need to carry out? Okay. So all those things, whether you're going to 
go for an simple treatment or you're going to go for an activated sludge uh, or a combined treatment and all so for all those things you need to collect a sample you need to analyze that you need to understand the sample and based on that you're going to design it to know the characteristic of the thing so it is regarding what means what the pollutant levels are present in that stream the stream is highly polluted less polluted okay it's in pure water where you need to put your pure water treatment plant okay because it should be in pure zone itself so to understand all the characteristic of that stream itself zones of pollution in that okay so you need to carry out a sampling process itself it has to be done so for those all reasons sampling plays a very much important role so now what type of samples are there okay so we have got a grab sample we got a random sample uh, we can uh, grab or a random sample what we can say we got a composite sample we have got an integrated sample so now <clears throat> what is a grab sample so grab sample is nothing but okay we tend to collect a sample from a single or multiple spot at different times and we carry out analysis separately the collection can be done in pipes reservoirs open wells or a drain itself okay so we carried out in a uh, sampling process over there but the major disadvantage of a grab sample technique is that we can't use this method of sampling for design of parameters so design of parameters here is nothing but if you want to design a sewage treatment plant okay and uh, you need to carry out a sample analysis okay. so grab sample is not suited to carry out for those kind of analysis why because it provides a quality data at that time of the collection sample it, it, it is not reflecting an average condition so that that is one of the major disadvantage of a graph sample itself next one the composite sample so composite sample is nothing but it can be done automatically itself with a regular interval of time say hourly basis or 24 hour basis with preferable quantity for same quantity every time you tend to collect okay and it can be done according to time and according to quantities and this type of sampling help you draw a conclusion about water quality means how the water quality is okay you can draw a conclusion very much easy but the major drawback of this type of sampling is you can miss a peak concentration time so what do you mean by peak concentration time so at a particular time what happens there is the concentration level or you can in easy words again say the pollution level will be high you can miss that time itself for example what i can say over here is see if we are taking a sampling say from nine o'clock it is an hourly basis from morning 9 a.m to you we can say an evening uh, 9 p.m itself. so from 9 a.m an hourly basis when we consider it 9 to 10 10 to 11 11 to 12 12 to 1 1 to 2 2 to 3 and so on now what's the problem going to face over here is if suppose in midday say around 12 30 or 1 30 pm the maximum concentration level has been reached or maximum pollution has been reached because your time frame is not lying with that time you will miss that peak period okay so that's an imp uh, that's a major drawback of this type of sampling itself next an integrated sampling what do you mean by an integrated sampling integrated sampling in simple words it's a combination of a grab sample and a composite sample now what happens in this sampling is it's a mixture of analysis of grab sample you can collect at a different points simultaneously there may be in a stream a river in combined treatment plant a different units in that treatment plant itself you can understand the treatability and the composition of wastewater okay. 
an integrated sample can be collected by an um, uh, or can say a mechanical uh, system or an automated system over here and will have a, will be you'll be knowing the depth and without contaminating the sample you can take it very easily next one the sampling standard methods so sampling standard methods are nothing but how you are going to plan and do those collection and all. how you are going to do it okay that part the first one is planning phase so planning phase is nothing but so which location you are going to uh, go and collect the sample at what time at what interval how many number of sample you required carry out an analysis work and to reach a comprehensive result itself next one types so which type you are going to select grab composite or integrated based on your requirement itself okay. next one sampling method a specific method or a technique or an equipment you are going to use or a manually you are going to carry out or you are going to carry out an automated one so in that is a method for example what you can do is manually for a reverse stream, if I want to carry out in a sampling process, what I need to do is I need to go at a middle point in a boat. I need to drop in bottle at a specific depth. I need to collect it because at that that only what it does it resemble the quality of that water body itself. So it's a manual process. I want to say it is it's in one of the method of collecting. An automated one here is we all the sewage treatment plant or in a modernized uh, effluent treatment plant they have got in sensors it senses automatically over there is next one sampling storage and prevention it's a very much important point what the total quantity you maximum you required the duration also plays a very much important role and how we are going to preserve it okay that also plays a very much important role in analyzing sample if you preserve it wrongly what happen what it will do is it will destroy the sample and whatever the analysis work you have done it will be wrongly analyzed sample constituent um, sample constituents are nothing but uh, these are the measuring parameters itself okay and so what type of parameters you want to measure sampling labels and chain are nothing but number of uh, we can see the first one uh, if you collected a sample in a series wise okay so what which one is the first which one is the second which one is the third is the chain part over there itself how you're going to label it how you're going to enter in the field book and how you're going to deliver into your laboratory itself and how you're going to name it that also plays a very much important you can see there over there is an example of naming the sample itself next one Sample preservation is as important as a sample collection. I can say here is more than that. Why? Because if the preservation is wrongly done, whatever the sample you have collected, that is of no use. Because when preservation is wrong, the sample will be spoiled and whatever the analysis work you have carried out on that sample, it will be wrongly analyzed. So now, how you need to store the sample? sample should be stored in clean sterilized water the container that is being selected for the sample it should not react with the sample okay so that's a major point next one it should be always stored at a cool place approximately towards in a room temperature itself. and if you want to do the testing for BOD and COD test no preservative should be added for there and when I use that word another word it says like key the preservatives should be added okay because there should be no biological reaction take place in that uh, sample itself the preservative here which we are going to add is chloroph uh, chloroform formaldehyde and sulfuric acid okay so this is all about sampling I hope you have understood uh, the topic of sampling. Next time uh, we will come out with some more videos. Thank you for now. Thank you. Thank you.